My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. I hope you all are doing well. Recently, I began posting about a tent that is an alternative to the Snug Pack Ionosphere. The tent that I'm talking about was the Winterial Bivy style tent. Since I began discussing that tent and also posting about it on social media, I heard from a Patreon donator who had the idea that I should check out the Mountain Smith Lycan One Person Tent. Apparently, this tent is very close to the Snug Pack Ionosphere. I did some searching, I found the tent, I like what I saw, so I ordered it, and here we go. Here it is. In this episode today, we are doing a first look at this tent. Let's check it out, let's set it up, let's see how the quality is, and let's get ready to begin testing it out. That's what this episode is all about. <laughs> Just in case you don't know what the Snug Pack Ionosphere is, that's a one person low profile tent that is excellent for stealth camping. The problem with that shelter is that the price has gone up to $300 over the years and the quality has gone down. So I and many others have been looking for an alternative to that tent. And that my friends is why we are here today. To start off here, let's do a component breakdown. So we have the storage bag. This is the bottom. This is the top. We have a drop bowl. Let's see what's included with this tent. We have tent poles, and we have two of these. We have tent stakes, and we have 10 shepherd hooks. What we have here is a ground sheet. This is the tent body, this is the fly, and that's what you receive with this tent. So far, the setup process has been very simple. The tent includes a ground sheet, which is perfectly cut for this tent. So you don't have to worry about tucking it in or anything like that. It matches the body perfectly. When it comes to the body and also the ground sheet, there are buckles that connect to the fly. With this tent here, you could set it up with the body, the ground sheet, and the fly, or you can leave the body out and connect the fly to the ground sheet. So you have two ways that you could set this tent up. I guess actually three ways if you want to set the tent up without the fly. Most people wouldn't do that, but you do have that option, I suppose. The body connects to the poles via clips, which are very easy to implement. One of the most striking features to this tent is the front door. Not only is the door extremely large, but the top of this tent is also very high, which means it'll be easier to get in and out of this tent than many other bivy style tents. Before I put the fly on this tent, let's go ahead and measure it and let's see what the real world measurements are. Let's see who can fit in this tent and who can't. First, we'll start with length. Considering real world measurements to be comfortable inside of this tent, you need to be under six foot eight inches. That's a good thing. This is a long tent, folks. Now let's measure the peak height. Three feet, maximum width, four feet. Now, of course, this does taper as you go down towards the foot box. At the foot box, it is two feet wide. Also, it needs to be mentioned up here at the top, it tapers as well. The next aspect that really stands out concerning this tent is the lack of mesh. You do have mesh at the door. You have a panel right here. You have a strip here, a partial strip in the back, also on this side. And basically it repeats on the other side of the tent, unfortunately. This tent has a lot of fabric on it. The entire top of the tent is covered in fabric. And also, the majority of the front of the tent is covered in fabric. All of this fabric is very disappointing to see because all this is going to do is limit airflow. It's going to limit ventilation. When it comes to a tent, one of the most expensive aspects is the mesh. You would think it would be other components, but that's simply not the case. Mesh is very expensive to manufacture and it's also expensive to put into a tent. What companies do is this. 
to lower the cost of a tent, they put this fabric material on there. It adds to the weight, it decreases airflow, ventilation, and it holds in heat. It does all of the things that you do not want a three season tent to do. So yes, I am disappointed to see this aspect. And that's because in the summer months when it's really hot out, if you're inside of this tent, it's going to be holding in heat and you're going to be uncomfortable. Luckily, there is some mesh, it could be worse, but this is something that we'll just have to test out to see just how bad it is. I would say the saving grace is that you do have large mesh panels up towards where your head and chest will be. Mountain Smith even states on the tent itself that this is a three season shelter, but yet they put so much fabric on this tent here, it simply makes no sense. The company should know better. You know everybody, I was thinking about what they printed on the side of this tent. It is highly unusual for a company to print the season of the tent. So this says Mountain Smith three season. That's really bizarre. I was thinking maybe that's because there's so much fabric on this tent that it could confuse people. That's pretty strange. What do you all think? I can understand that the company wants to keep the price of this tent low, but making their customers suffer while inside of it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. That's not the right way to go about it. This tent should be covered in mesh because it's a three season tent. With that being said though, I will test this out and we will see what the ultimate performance of this tent is coming up soon. For now though, let's go ahead and let's put the fly on this tent. We're at the point now where the tent has been set up, the fly's on it. I have to say that I love the color of the fly hair. This is perfect for a stealth camping tent. It's dark, it's earth tones, it will blend in with just about anything. This is something that's going to work really, really nicely, again, for stealth camping purposes. The fly features two guy lines, one on each side to help hunker it down, hold it down to the ground in windy situations. The door itself can be tied back so you can enter and exit the tent easily. Also, there is a storm flap that goes over the zipper for the door. In a nutshell, that is the Lycan one person tent. Now let's go over some stats real quick. Then I will share with you all my thoughts and opinions of this tent so far, as there are things I like about this tent and things that I don't. With this tent, this is a non-freestanding bivy style tent. Non-freestanding means that this tent has to be staked out for it to stay up. When it comes to the materials, you're looking at aluminum stakes aluminum poles. The fly is a 185T polyester with a 2000 millimeter hydrostatic head rating. The tent body is a 185 polyester as well. The floor features a combination of polyester materials, an 85D and a 190T, and it features a 5000 millimeter hydrostatic head rating, and the footprint is made from polyester. When it comes to the store dimensions, you're looking at 23 inches long by 7 inches by 7 inches. When it comes to the tent body, we've already gone over those. If you're under 6 feet 8 inches, this tent will work for you. The weight of the tent is 4 pounds 6.2 ounces. And as far as price goes, at the time of filming on Amazon, this tent was running $99. On the Mountain Smith website, they had a sale. It was $90. And the full retail price is $180. The tent does feature a bathtub floor, and all of the seams have been taped. A footprint has been included. And get this, everybody. This tent comes with a lifetime warranty. Does this company honor their warranties? I have no idea. The truth is, I know very little about this company. They've been around for quite a while, but this is certainly not a big name brand by any means. In fact, over the last 10 years or so, I've heard people mention this company maybe once, maybe twice at the most. And because so little is being said about this company, I really can't say a whole lot about them. I haven't heard good nor bad. We're at the point now where I'm going to share my thoughts of this tent so far. So first off, for a one person tent, this tent is very heavy. There's a lot of buckles here, and at the same time, there's a lot of fabric. Speaking of the fabric, I'm very disappointed to see all this on the body. Again, the company should know better. When you put fabric on an inner, it's going to hold in heat and it's going to block airflow. And that's going to be a big problem with this tent because the fly itself goes all the way down to the ground, which means that when you're inside of this and the tent is zipped up, you are going to get very little airflow inside of it. So not only do you have the fabric, which is holding in heat, but additionally you have the tent fly that goes basically all the way to the ground, which is blocking airflow. So it's a combination of big potential problems. As far as the quality goes, I would say it's okay. There's some issues here. There are loose threads all over this tent. Additionally, on the fly here at the door, there are two stains, which came from the factory that way. You all saw it. We opened this tent together. It hasn't been exposed to any sort of chemicals or anything like that, but yet there are two dark stains on the fly. And that's acceptable for a tent that costs $90, $100. Bucks. 
but for 180, I would say no. As far as the pack size goes, I say it's okay. Again, this is a heavy tent, and it's because of the materials that the company went with. The color is fantastic. I absolutely love it. Here's an interesting thing, though. The company says this is green. I disagree 100%. This is Coyote Brown all day long. On the inside, there's quite a bit of space for one person plus some gear. There is virtually no vestibule space. It is easy to get into the tent and out of it. When you're inside of the tent and it's all sealed up, there are no vents. And again, that translates to poor airflow and potential condensation issues, all of which we will test out in the future. Without a doubt, everybody, I am concerned about this tent, but at the same time, I'm excited to test it out. The tent does have features that are rather strong, such as the large door, the large space on the inside, side. This is a bivy style tent, but yet there's quite a bit of space here. Easily, this is a tent that will fit most people, and we're talking about length and width. For stealth camping purposes, I think this could work potentially very well. The biggest questions that I have involve airflow, condensation, and waterproofness, all of which I will begin testing out, so stay tuned to the channel. If you have any experience with this tent or with this company, comment down below and let everyone know. Again, everybody, I've heard from viewers maybe once or twice over the last 10 years about this company, and the simple truth is I know very little about them. So if anybody can add to our community of knowledge, comment down below and share. By the way, I should mention this, everybody, there is a two person version of this tent available i almost forgot that anyways i am done everybody comment down below share your thoughts what do you all think about this tent do you think it's going to perform well in rainy wet conditions also what do you all think about the fabric on the inside of this tent as far as ventilation and airflow goes without a doubt this is going to be a warmer tent this is not something that i would recommend for hot summer days like today but as you're going into the fall or maybe transitioning from winter to spring, this could potentially work. Without a doubt, there's a time and a place for this shelter. All we have to do is figure out exactly when that is. Again, everybody, it's so important not to pay attention to what companies claim as far as the marketing goes. There's a reason why this company has stamped three season on the side. Again, I've never seen a company do that before. That's definitely different. If you have enjoyed this episode, hit the thumbs up. I do appreciate it. Also, make sure to check out my second channel, A Quiet Place Adventures. On that channel, you will find weekly adventures that are very much different than those that you find on this channel. Check it out, everybody. I do appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you like the content. Anyways, folks, I am done. Take care. Be well. Strength and honor. Bye for now. Mountain Smith, why did you put all of that fabric on there? Why did you do it? You took what could have been a fantastic three season tent and you made it warmer. Is that what you wanted? <laughs> that makes no sense. No sense at all. Oh, 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 oh,